loved it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard the Talk 4 podcast, episode 82, the quickfire podcast, where we ask four great questions to unique and interesting people. Behind the mic today is your host, Louis Scoopian. That's moi. And let me welcome our very special guest for today, Helen Isaac. Helen, how's it going? We're uh, dressed for a very... <laughs> vibrant occasion by the looks of it here. How are you doing today? I don't say we're dressed for it, but we're in a great <laughs> setting though, right? Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> like I said, I can feel my IQ kind of just going up from this yeah. bookshelf behind us right now. But oh, yeah, awesome. tell us a little bit about what you do, who you are, and just give us a rundown of just Helen Isaac. Um, Louis, talking about me. <laughs> so I only recently became a personal trainer, actually. I qualified a year ago. Um, before that, I worked in predominantly fashion, corporate world and the beauty world. Um, but uh, I've been on a bit of a journey myself. So I, around about 10 years ago, was heavily overweight, right. heavily depressed, feeling awful. My health was at its worst. And uh, I don't know, we, I, my parents live in Switzerland, which is uh, hard w walking. <laughs> Everything's on the slope. <laughs> And um, I was on a family holiday and I have a little girl and all I could hear was her saying, oh, where's mummy? Why is she all the way back there? And um, it was probably the worst point of my life. And I realized that my, what I was doing to my body was not good mm -hmm. and it was ruining my health. It was, everything didn't feel like it was going right. And so I needed to change. And so I made, when we got back from that holiday, that was the like breaking point for me. Yeah. And I made a massive change. And um, here I am now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And um, yeah, I mean, people are going to notice that this is actually the debut episode of an in-person Talk for podcast. I so know, I'm really honoured. <laughs> I'm honoured to be like... Your first actual off-screen person. That's epic. Yeah, it's going to be good. And um, yeah, I mean, like, we've known each other for a little while now. And I've, I've had a fair rundown of who you are and stuff. And I just thought, honestly, like, your story and the stuff you're doing, it just had to be told. So that's why you're here. That's why we're here. And it's going to be a good one. So if you're ready to go, ready to... I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay. So just tell us a little bit about the backstory then. So how and why did your fitness journey actually kind of like start? And did, how did that lead you to becoming a personal trainer then? So like I said, I've always worked in like the corporate industry. I worked in fashion and beauty, totally different world. Um, it, I've always had like quite a fast paced job where you just overwork, 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 and you never really think about yourself. You're mm -hmm. just constantly nine to five, nine to five. Well, not even nine to five. <laughs> it, was, it was quite grueling, um, which was great. Like I've worked for some wicked companies and I, I was loving life. Mm -hmm. But what I was neglecting was myself. Um, and actually, I had a real turning point uh, where my daughter was around about three. I wasn't keeping up with her. My health was at risk. I wasn't feeling great. And I just thought that, you know, something has to change. And so I did that. And that was no mean <laughs> task. Like, it was hard. But I made such a big change to my lifestyle. I joined a gym. I learned that actually gyms aren't as scary as you think. Um, I met some brilliant people along the way who just wanted to encourage me. I changed my relationship with food dramatically. Um, food used to terrify me. I have done every fad diet out there and it just made me miserable. <laughs> and eventually I learned more about nutrition along the way through my fitness journey. And then it got to a point where I was working for a cosmetic company and through lockdown, we, you know, we lost everything, didn't we? We lost all kind of access to everything. And we were on a Zoom call and one of us made a suggestion that we should do an exercise class. It was all around, all around the time of Joe Wicks. And I love him. I think he's brilliant. Um, what an inspiration. And I said, oh, I'll do it. I don't mind doing that. Like, I love it. I love fitness. I'll, I'll teach a class. And I did that. And I was like, actually, do you know what? I'm really good at this. And I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the fact that so many, what people got from it, and so I decided to train as a personal trainer on the side of working full-time and being a full-time mum, which was crazy <laughs> and hard, but I got it done. I met some amazing 
fitness instructors who supported me through that. And then in May last year, I launched my own business and I went completely freelance. That's absolutely epic, isn't it? And let's just say, I mean, there's a lot of personal trainers out there really, isn't there? I mean, there's mm. so many, even just in Somerset, there's just tons. And mm -hmm. you've just been <laughs> awarded best PT in Somerset, Dorset and Bristol in the Muddy Stilettos. So that's epic. So let's talk a bit about that then. So obviously one of your biggest, or probably your biggest accolades so far is your recent win in the Muddy Stilettos where you've been voted the best PT in Somerset, Dorset Thank in 2023. You. Amazing. Thank you very much. Proud of you, by the way. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> from a business standpoint, what do you think are some of the things that set you apart from others? And can you talk us through the importance of being very selective with your clients? I think for me, the fact that I'm on my journey right now, like I'm not at my best. I'm not where I want to be. I still have a goal. And the fact that I've come so far. So to, to give you some context, you know, I was morbidly obese. I was at a point where, I mean, I don't particularly believe in this whole BR, BMI rubbish. I think we need to scrap that and move on, but that's a whole other story. Um, if, if you were to weigh me and take me to a hospital, they would say you are at risk of heart attack, stroke, F diabetes, like type two diabetes, I was 100% there. So I managed to turn that around. Um, it, you know, exercise for me has completely changed my life in all aspects of my life. And I, I know that's a bold statement, but I will stand by that. Mm. Everything in my life changed the moment I fell in love with exercise and the moment that I created a lifestyle around it. Um, I've totally forgotten your question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was great. Let's talk about... So. This is what happens when you're in person. <laughs> it's great stuff, I love it. <laughs> So one of the really kind of like interesting things that you told me a little while ago was that you are happy to turn away clients and you're very selective. Oh, I knew you were going to bring this up. I think that's really interesting because there's so many people out there who will just grab the business and stuff. Yeah, okay, right. Let me break this down for you. I've worked in corporate world for so long. So I've been really fortunate to work with some really great business-minded people. Mm. And I think... I went into this, I've always worked in customer facing roles, which is such a great experience to have when you come into this. Mm -hmm. I'm also on my own fitness journey. So you can't kid a kidder. I have created every kind of excuse about why my health is like it was, um, excuse as to why I don't, can't exercise. So for me, I went into this thinking, all I want is to change one person's life, how I've managed to change my own. That's all I want, just one person. And I also went into it thinking, I don't wanna train people who, who don't wanna create this as a lifestyle. You will meet so many, like in the fitness world is so huge, it's massive. Right now it's on a surge, right? Everyone thinks like it's quite glamorous to be a personal trainer. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's wicked. It's the best job I've ever had in my life. But you get so many different types, which is why, I mean, I'll eat my hat if I do do this, so bold statement, but I don't want to do, I don't want to be an online-based PT. I want to be a face-to-face -face PT because I think that relationship that you have with your personal trainer is invaluable. Mm. Like, we're, we're friends, we're therapists, we're, you know, I don't know, people that you can complain about your life to whilst exercising. Um, I, it's, the, the reason that I went into this is because all I wanted to do was show someone what, when they're at a point in their life like I was, where I was just crumbling, that you can bring it all back and you can create a better lifestyle. Mm. That's why I went into it. You will get so many different personal trainers out there who some are just in it for the cash. Some are in it because they think it's a glamorous job. I am here because I truly believe everybody no matter what can benefit from exercise absolutely 100 percent true and um so we're all we're all different aren't we we're all made up differently and we've all got preferences and stuff but like if you're someone who's sort of just getting into fitness right now and stuff how do you kind of go about finding the right sort of personal trainer for you and like what's 
what's like the checklist almost? Of... Like most personal trainers will offer a consultation, mm -hmm. right? So go and meet them, go and chat to them because, you know, it's a long hour if you don't get on with that person. Mm -hmm. And equally, like most of my clients, I, I work with them because maybe there's a confidence issue. They're worried about that gym environment. Like gyms are so intimidating. They don't mean to be, but they are for some people. Um, so you know, your personal trainer should be there to, to make you feel like no one else is around, to make you feel like you're number one, to, to lift you up when you're not feeling great, to motivate you, to, to inspire you. Like if you're not doing that, then, then, mm -hmm. then there's no point, you know, so that should be your checklist. Go, I want someone that's going to be able to motivate me, make me feel good about myself. I also want to have fun. Like <laughs> there's no point otherwise. Exercise should be fun. But also you want to achieve, like you want to, you want to get to that goal. Absolutely, yeah. What do you think, um, here's an interesting one for you. What do you think were like some of the things that when you were going into your fitness journey or from a PT standpoint right now, when you look at the clients and new clients and stuff, what do you think are some of the things that are most commonly misconceived almost? So when someone sort of starts joining, they have like a preset thought about the gym or just yeah. physical training in general. What do you think are like some of the most common sort of self-conscious points that people are actually completely wrong to think when they start out? I think the, like, the fitness industry has changed so much recently and for the better, I might add. Like even when I started my fitness journey, there were still kind of things around where it wasn't the best, like the whole, I get a lot of, um, oh, this has been really nice. I thought you were just gonna beast me. And I'm like, that's not my job. My job is not to push you to your limit where you don't ever wanna come back. My job is that you've enjoyed this so much, you cannot wait for your next session, mm -hmm. you know? And I think the other thing is that people think gyms are full of big, Burly, grunty men, you know, posing in the mirrors. Yeah, there's an element of that. Of course there is. But why do we see it like that? Why are we not celebrating these guys? They've worked hard, right? They've worked hard to get to where they are. When I see someone posing in the mirror, I mean, I think it's kind of funny, but I also really want to celebrate that person and be like, amazing, well done. Like, you've worked so hard. Like, be mm. proud of that body. That's great. But, you know, maybe be a bit quieter with the grunting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a few of those at our we gym. We do anyway. have a few of those. Um, but, you know, that's that's fitness. That's just, you. But, but we're moving on from that. And you and I are very fortunate. The gym that we go in, it, there's such a mix. And I think that's starting to happen. Unless you're going to a specialised gym where, you know, bodybuilding is the thing, you are going to get such a range of people and the biggest thing that I, the biggest bit of advice that I can give anyone is everybody feels the same. We had this conversation recently with so many different members. So we had it with one of my new clients. We had it with a client who's been with me for over a year. And then we had the same conversation with someone who could be seen as quite intimidating within the gym. He works really hard on himself. He's trying to bodybuild. All of them said the same thing, said that when they first started, they were terrified of the gym environment. You just have to get over that hurdle. And then once you get to where I am, you realize actually it's a community, it's friends, it's friendship, it's support, it's cheerleading. Everybody in that gym, there is not one person that doesn't want you to succeed. And mm. if you're not getting that, find another gym. Yeah. Talking about that then, I like this because we're in Somerset <laughs> right now and this is out in the sticks and there's not that many gyms around and it's like, you know. There's quite a few. Well, the thing is when you're doing something where you need to be consistent, I think mm -hmm. convenience is key. So something that's close to you inspires more devotion to stay staying yeah. consistent with that sort of thing. But if you're someone who's like, you're just starting out or whatever and you're kind of going to this gym and it's not making you feel the right way. Where do you think like the red flags are in a gym where you need to kind of like, okay, I need to go somewhere else now? Like, well, what? also I think like to your point, we are in Somerset. You, you To exercise, it doesn't have to be gym based. Like you can do, there. Are, YouTube is insane. So <laughs> the online workouts, if you don't feel comfortable right yet to join a gym and you want to get to a certain stage where you do feel comfortable. I mean, my advice would be, you're never going to get to that stage. You've just got to jump over that hurdle and get yourself into a gym. Find a wicked PT and enjoy that process. But also there's outside, go for a run, start walking. Like walking is possibly the best exercise we have. <laughs> and we are so fortunate that we live in like probably the prettiest place on the planet. So that's great. 
Um, but, you know, if you are in a gym and you're just not feeling it, ask yourself why. Is that because, you know, you're not feeling confident in yourself and you need to work on that side of your life? Or is it because that gym environment is not enjoyable for you? If that's the case, find another one. Like, there's so many. I can recommend quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a great point. Absolutely. And um, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, we are in an isolated place, but I think the one that we have right now at Morpha is uh, just a great environment to start out in and stuff. Yeah. But, you know, there's there's places out there where it's a toxic environment. And obviously a place like a gym is defined by the people who go there. Too, yeah, so, 100%. Yeah, you have to be... Um, you have to be critical of yourself, but also the environment. But don't you judge a book by a cover. Mm. So when I first started my journey, I was so uh, anxious, self-conscious. I mean, I've recently gone back to the first gym I ever started in. And this was a great experience for me because this is a big staircase that you walk up and then you're on the gym floor. Mm -hmm. Now, that in itself, whoever designed that, silly, because that is the most intimidating thing <laughs> in the world. Like, I used to call it the staircase of doom. Like, <laughs> because the moment you walk up it, everyone just goes like that. And you're like, okay, I'm not worried. Um, but... When I went back, which was only about two weeks ago, my head was up. I was looking around. I found bits of equipment that I never knew that gym had because I'm so much more confident within myself now. My advice is go to the gym, give it a try. The, my, the best thing you can possibly do, go on a bit of cardio first. So a cardio, a treadmill, a rower, a cross trainer. They're brilliant. Treadmills, cross trainers your two go-tos because you're up a little bit higher get on that it's the easiest bit of equipment because it's a, either a go and a stop get on it spend 10 minutes getting yourself into the zone feeling a bit better feeling a bit more confident whilst you're on there plan out your workout so you're looking around that gym you're looking at people using the equipment so you're getting an idea of what you're going to do pick a body part. <laughs> like, am I going to train upper body? Am I going to train lower body? And then work your way around those machines. Anybody could do that. I could like, the, a person that has never walked into a gym before, I could tell them to go and do that and they could put their own program together. Mm. Three, three rounds, 10 reps of every machine. Do you see? So yeah. it's not hard. It's getting over that gym anxiety and also, eventually, I'd really encourage anyone to go and have a conversation with someone because they're also probably feeling quite intimidated and you can't judge a book by its cover. I hear it from so many people all the time. Oh, I didn't like such and such a gym because it didn't have a very good vibe. Okay, well, did you speak to anyone there? No. Well, then how do you know that? Mm, so true. It is true. It's like you look at our gym and obviously no names, but there's some people there who look way more intimidating than they actually are. And yeah. like, they're my friends now. I really, really like these people. <laughs> Everyone gets a little bit of resting <laughs> gym face. <laughs> it's so true. But yeah, it's funny because obviously I had, you know, years of playing tennis and traveling the world and stuff. And I've been to literally so many gyms. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could not even put a ballpark figure on that number right now. But yeah. I think actually it is a very intimidating thing walking into a gym for the first time or just a different gym or something. And literally, yeah. like you said, my tactic has always been, okay, I'm going to find the exercise bike. And in yeah. that time, I am looking around at mm -hmm. everything. I'm yeah. figuring out there's that, there's that, yeah. there's that. Okay, now I, I'm just gathering a bit of intel on the place. Yeah. And it's so simple. Like you said, it's either just start or stop kind of a yeah. thing on one of these machines. So yeah, yeah. that's just a great way to just get yeah. in there with a brief plan and then just gather some info yeah. on like your environments and stuff but so we, we're talking a lot about kind of like the clientele right now aren't we and the people who are sort of getting into it but let's talk about the people who actually want to train other people so there's a lot of pts out there right now yeah um if we have an aspiring one listening in right now what are some of your top tips for starting out and picking up your first clients and creating lasting relationships with them which you've obviously done very well oh thank well thank you Louis. <laughs> i would hope so um i think okay there's two things one you have to be passionate about what you do there's otherwise there's just no point so if you are not like in love with the exercise or wanting to support people through that 
it's not going to be the right career for you. Two, uh, quality over quantity. So it's the best advice someone has ever given me. I just wanted to get one client. That was my goal. Just one client. I want to get one client and I want to change their lives for them from a fitness point of view. Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll give an example. Let's call the client Sarah, okay? <laughs> Shout out Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> she did ask for one, but I'm not actually talking about this, Sarah. Um, Sarah starts, okay? She has explained that she's not feeling great about the gym. Don't worry, I've got you. Let me get you in. We'll have a session. She loves her session. Great. Invest in Sarah. Check it, Check in with her every so often. How are you doing? Create her a really good program that she feels 100% comfortable with. Then Sarah starts to, telling her friends and maybe her friend wants to come along. Wicked. Her friend comes in. Then Sarah gets so confident she actually, and she's loving the process. She now wants to have another session a week. So you've just doubled your business, yeah? Then she gets so into it, she's become a complete, like, gym addict. Mm -hmm. She now wants to have three sessions a week. And she's also told two of her friends who have now become your client. Word of mouth is just, like, I can't, there's no price tag that you can put on that. So you will see it constantly within the fitness world. There are PTs out there, and I'm sure they're listening, and they think I'm wrong, and that is fine where they were like, I need to get quantity. I need, I need more clients, I need more clients, I need more clients. But actually what you're doing is you're stopping yourself from having time to really, really invest in the ones that are dedicated to the process, the ones that want to succeed, that will hit their goals, that you can shout out about, that can inspire everybody else, even within the gym setting. They're watching this client really succeed and they think, you know what, I want a slice of that, I'm gonna sign up with her. It's good stuff. I mean, so obviously we touched on it earlier, but you won the money stilettos thing, and well, thank I mean, you, it's, I did. It's it's huge, but <laughs> you know, we look, I look at your clients and I see so much just love and loyalty and respect there and stuff. And I'm just wondering, do you think that like probably the most contributing factor to actually getting that award and winning that is just the relationship you've built with your clients outside of just the gym stuff? Because it, as a PT. I feel like it's pretty easy to just get trapped in that sort of, I care about my clients during when I'm getting paid, yeah. right? So yeah. do you think that's like why you've achieved that? A hundred percent. Like they, some of them have become firm friends, like lifelong friends. Um, I say some of them, all of them actually. <laughs> all of them have. Um, I didn't know that they were nominating me for this award, so I am incredibly honoured. And it has been a real eye-opener for me. Like, it's been a rocky year, you know, right? <laughs> I launched my business and then two months later was diagnosed with leukaemia. That's tough in itself. Mm. Um, I thought that was game over. I thought, okay, well... That was great timing. Well done, Helen. <laughs> Left your corporate, your brilliant corporate job. Two months later, I had to stop work. I had to stop. At that point, I probably had about 10, 15 clients who were it just my life. And the new that was devastating news for them too, because it meant that it needed their fitness journey was halting. Yeah. Be it it only halted for around about a month, I did pretty well. But you know, they could have found someone else within that time. None of them did. And I think that speaks high volumes for their loyalty. Mm. Um, but equally, I think they knew because I'm so passionate about what I do, because I have had probably around about 10 different personal trainers through my journey. And I've learned what's great and what isn't. I took all of that greatness and I built a business out of it. And you are not just a PT. It is not just an hour. It's going home, thinking about that person, you know, sending them a little message here and there, like, you know, I'm, I'm here for you. I know you're going through a tough time at the moment or this has happened to you or or send me some dog pictures. You know? <laughs> I don't know, whatever it the is. Just, <laughs> you know, it's creating friendships. It's creating relationships with people. That is so, that's more important than the actual fitness side, I think. Yeah. It's making that person build that trust like they trust you you're putting them in a very vulnerable pos position like walking into a gym exercising no matter where your fitness level is you're vulnerable so you need to be able to make them feel 
so comfortable, they trust you, but equally like you are their biggest fan. Yeah. Like I, all I want is for them to succeed. That is it. Like to go home and to think, I, I mean, it happened this morning. I had two clients this morning and one of them has like transformed herself. <laughs> and it's like, I'm watching that happen. You can't put a price tag on that, Louis. Like it's just insane. So I don't know the answer. I think my clients <laughs> could tell you, but I think because I care so much about what I do, because I know how important it's been within my life. Like it saved my life. Fitness has saved my life. That's amazing. That's yeah. a PT. You can very easily go polar opposite of like just, I only care about this client when we're in a session sort of a thing. But you're also doing all this stuff outside of that too. And it's clearly worked with the clients that you have and how that's kind of, you know, even just the ward. I mean, that's just a showing of just great loyalty. Well, you know people. what's so nice is it wasn't just my clients that voted for yeah. that. You know, it was lovely. Like we've got, we've created such a lovely gym community but equally like my instagram community is was voting was behind me for that you know the the just the silly little videos that i do now and again get so mm. many like there's just you know it's just lovely like i think if you are true to what you believe and passionate and positive it's infectious right yeah. people really it's just nice to see i think how the hell do you balance all this out? I mean, <laughs> you, so you, you've got this full-time 24-7 job of like looking after these clients and supporting them and stuff. Then you've got the marketing side I mean, of they do also look after themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Just to point that out there. They're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, your mumming, your yeah. the health side yeah. of things, you've got so many just moving parts right now. I mean, how do you actually balance all this out and actually find time to just be a human <laughs> how do you how do you manage that i don't know do you want to tell me i've got no idea i'm spinning plates over Apple here calendars. <laughs> yeah 100 percent. oh gosh if it weren't for that oh yeah um, tell me about it. <laughs> i don't know like it's weird so sometimes you have a moment and i have this with clients and they will tell you like they'll i'll be there and then all of a sudden i'll go this is my job <laughs> this is what i get to do every day mm -hmm. that's amazing so you know i've it doesn't feel like work and i think for me that was massive i have been blessed with the roles that i've been given throughout my like beauty and fashion career i've worked for some amazing people hands down um that's was has been a wicked journey uh but the work life balance was so hard mm. it's hard so when clients come to me and they're like this is my hour of just relaxation actually yeah they're working hard whilst they're doing it you know <laughs> like an hour of relaxation with burpees in it you're crazy <laughs> um but it's so important. It's a release. It's getting away from everything else that you forget about your worries and you forget about what's going on in your personal life. And you just have a lovely hour where you are just working on yourself. I get to do that 24 mm. seven. <laughs> so I think that's how I balance it. It's changed every aspect of my life. I am a better mum now. I am a better friend, I think. I don't, <laughs> I don't see anyone, but... <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, and I think I'm a better person. Mm. I think that's a decent answer, to be fair, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's true that, I mean, it's like, it's so easy to just get caught up in work and business and yeah. stuff and actually just have no time just and to you be... you know, you. the whole leukaemia thing, put it in perspective for me, that was scary. Um... It continues to be scary, but life, you realize, you have a massive wake up call. Like life is so short, you don't realize. We all think we're invincible. Everyone thinks you're invincible. Everyone listening will think they're invincible. <laughs> um, but the moment you're told you're not is a real light bulb moment where you're like, okay, life is so important and I'm gonna grab it and hold on to it and just make it amazing. It's funny how it works in adversary, isn't it? It's like 
sometimes actually a health scare can literally be the biggest just okay this is time to change now yeah it's, it's sad how that it's yeah. sad how that happens and how that sounds but it's actually true like sometimes a health scare can literally change someone's entire life yeah. into something so much more positive you've just led us perfectly into question four wow. this is fantastic I mean, <laughs> you I should try. Post. i should just <laughs> leave <laughs> right so uh to me you're a person who stares adversity in the face and shows it who's boss like literally i mean i'm sure people can tell you leukemia you know everything it's just crushed you, it literally <laughs> if we have a listener right now who's not happy, mm. self-conscious, mm. or going through something negative, maybe like you were, mm -hmm. can you give them your best bit of advice for just getting on a better path and developing mm -hmm. a better relationship with themselves? You can feel sometimes, and I felt like this myself, that you are at your lowest of low and there is no way out. There is always a way out, 100%. Like today might be awful. Today you might not be able to get out of bed lift your head from a pillow, speak to anyone, you can't. But tomorrow will be better, it just will. Because if you reach out to someone that you trust, tell them how you're feeling, which is no easy thing, I know that, things can get better. Uh, if you are feeling like you need to make a change but you just don't know how, go and find someone like myself or, you know, watch some inspirational things on Instagram or, a, or a, a positivity podcast or something to change your mindset, to put you on a better path. Write a to-do list. I love to-do lists. <laughs> you know I do. Um, what do you want to achieve? Like, you're feeling like this now. How can you change that? So, you're at the lowest of your low. Maybe you're overweight. Maybe you're feeling unfit. Maybe your relationship isn't working. Maybe you're just unhappy. How can you change that? Write it down. How do I feel? I feel like these things. Write a list. What can you do that could change all of that? And sometimes that could literally be, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try a 10 minute walk today. Mm. You know, I'm going to clear my head. I'm going to go to bed earlier. I'm going to... I don't know, go and speak to a friend today, just something, because today might feel awful, but tomorrow could be better. Absolutely. That's really good advice. I mean, you know, one of the things for me as well is no one can underestimate anyone else's state of mind or depression or anything. But like one of the things I've found is like on the low points and low days, low times and stuff where things have just not been good and I just haven't been happy. Yeah. There've been small things that are just readily available to anyone yeah. that make the biggest difference. Yeah. And for me, that's been literally going outside and just touching grass, like literally just putting your hand on just nature literally yeah i mean that just changes yeah. something and a sunset or a sunrise yeah going to the gym these kind of even just small things that yeah. anyone can kind of go and do yeah I, I, I challenge anyone not to feel at least a little bit better. i have felt like louis i can't even describe to you when i was at my worst i felt like there was no way out what small things made that changed uh, I think family for me I've got a really good support network mm -hmm. uh, but not everyone has that yeah so what do you have you know everyone has a friend or everyone has a connection somewhere you know I have clients who don't have family they don't even have friends but they do have me mm. and so if they're feeling like that I'm there for them a hundred percent or if you don't have that, you have things like the Samaritans. Oh my goodness, <laughs> like invaluable. You have mind, you have, you know, so there's so many touch groups. There's so many like reels out there that could literally inspire you within seconds. Podcasts, Louis, mm. <laughs> like, Plug. you know. <laughs> <Talk> <laughs> but, but even doing that, like, like you said, just going outside, looking at the beauty around you can change your mindset. And I think for me, exercise has been like my antidepressants. It's been my sanity, my release, my creating better relationships. Like it, it's it's a friend, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And yes, yeah, like one of these things, it's just 
for me at times in the past, like where I've had, you know, I'll be totally honest about it. It's like occasionally we do get suicidal thoughts and stuff, don't we? But actually, I feel like my natural, most natural, just aversion to that, mm-hmm. which literally just sticks it in reverse gear straight away and just you know foot on the, on the pedal is just the thought that there is so much to see in this world and we yeah. live in a perfect world yeah and there is so much to see and what's so funny like so if I was to go back 15 years and speak to 15 years ago Helen she was very different to this one but this one was told you could die. <laughs> and I'm like clutching onto life. I'm like, no, <laughs> that's not happening. Whereas 15 years ago, Helen probably wanted to, you know? Mm. And it's insane. Like what exercise has done that has created like a better life. <laughs> it's made me so much happier. Like, I, you know, I am Mrs. Positivity. Literally. Because the alternative is, is just not I'm not going to go there anymore. I don't want to feel miserable. I don't want to feel sad anymore. I want to feel great. And all I want to do is show everyone else that they can also do that through exercise. So for me, you know, we we talk about the fitness world, don't we? And it's very much straight away, people go to the how you look. Mm. Yeah. And I worried, one of my worries was, I'm not skinny enough to be a personal trainer. How ridiculous (laughs) is that? I know, that was my worry. I remember saying it to another person in the fitness industry. And I think there is that little bit of a misconception still out there, but for me, no. Anybody, no matter where you are in your life, your size, your shape, who you are, what you do, how old you are. Like I've got Mm. some clients that are kicking ass right now. Yep, indeed. it, that it doesn't it doesn't matter yeah. like get 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 exercise in your life it's ne- there is never a, a like there is always a right time <laughs> um there's no there's no limits with exercise anyone can do it absolutely yeah so true. and it will just make you feel better instantly it's not always about the physical stuff for some people it is and that's great like amazing feel better look better but i think for me with my clients All I want them to do is leave the gym feeling a million times better than they did when they walked in. If they also get a crazy, brilliant body because of that and they feel more confidence because of that, great. That's a bonus. Absolutely. God damn, we took a deep turn there. uh, (laughs) Well, look, that's the triggering. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Let's sign up some clients, shall we? <laughs> so, right, four questions done. Um, shameless plug. You've got your oh, gosh. momentito I'm not very good promote. at doing this. No, I'm great at doing this. Um, please follow me on Instagram, <laughs> Helene Fitness. Um, Instagram is amazing, don't you think? Because yeah. it, I do so much on there and probably 99% of my clients come from there so follow me on there um or you can visit my website which is <laughs> helenisaacfitness.com um what else oh i don't know just just come, come and come and say hi if you're local to somerset come and say hi come to morfit come and come uh, and say hi absolutely yeah and um obviously link's going to be in the bio and stuff and the and the descriptions and all that but the nice thing is that you're very active on instagram and stuff so even if mm. someone is like a million miles away right now mm-hmm. they can still actually get something from just yeah the yeah content, and i right? love questions so like if you don't know how a bit of machinery works in the gym please ask me because <laughs> i love showing people that <laughs> great stuff well helen thank you for joining me today for the talk for podcast how was Thanks. the in-person first talk i mean i quite liked it we're in <laughs> by the way can i just say yeah. that this setting is insane it's ridiculous so we are in a place called new cross farm um i teach a class in there which is through a secret insane like uh, this place is literally hogwarts just bookshelf and it takes you through into the studio <laughs> where i teach a class so yeah that's wicked and um yeah sunday h-i-i-t right let's get some <laughs> let's get some people shall, to... shall i maybe plug that myself probably <laughs> <laughs> it's a sunday hit class at new cross farm somewhere. okay awesome stuff <laughs> well guys come turn up 
get on it and uh, head on. thanks for joining me today this has been a good one awesome stuff and thank you ladies and gentlemen uh episode 82 please do leave a like leave a comment subscribe all that good stuff follow me on instagram and uh yeah get tuned in and thank you guys for joining today it's been a good one see you all later signing off for now (laughs)